Today we're going to be testing out gaming on the MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro chip and this is not the lower end bin version, this is going to be the higher end version with 14 CPU cores, 24 gigabytes of RAM and most importantly 20 GPU cores. And we're going to be putting this GPU power to the test by running a multitude of Mac games as well as high end Windows titles being run through multiple translation layers. We'll also be doing a comparison with the lower end 12 CPU core, 16 GPU core version of the M4 Pro and seeing whether it's worth upgrading from the lower end model to the higher end model and what this means for gaming on a Mac. So the first game that we're looking at is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the Lara Croft third person adventure game and a very decent looking macOS port. This uses an Intel build and is translated to macOS via Rosetta 2. And here we're running the game at 1080p at the high graphics preset and we're getting about 90 FPS. I've also tried cranking up the settings up to 1440p and we're still running at the high preset getting about 60 or 70 FPS. This part is just a kind of interactive cutscene area so there's not much to see. Here within some of the kind of adventure platforming gameplay we're getting about 60 to 65 FPS and in the sequence in the village where there are probably dozens of NPCs on screen at once we're getting a similar frame rate. This game is running fantastically on the MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro chip. Next up we're looking at Total War Warhammer 3. So this is the Mac port of the game and even though it requires an M series chip it's actually the Intel build of the game running through Rosetta 2. So if you've not played this game before it's a mix of turn-based gameplay on the overworld which affects the intricate tactical real-time battles. So I'm a big fan of the Total War series and this is basically the best that you can get on Apple Silicon Max. I am running this in a relatively low resolution of 1080p because it's fairly demanding. We were playing on the Immortal Empire's Grand Strategy campaign map which has over 272 factions on turn one so it might be a good idea to crank down the settings a little bit in order to get good frame rates. Here at 1080p at high graphics preset we're getting anywhere between 40 and and 55 FPS which isn't too bad. Next up we're looking at the Paradox Grand Strategy game Victoria 3. So if you're familiar with these Paradox games they are basically huge historical campaign maps taking place in the Queen Victoria era of world history. So here the natively optimized Mac port manages to run pretty well. We're playing here at 1440p medium settings and we're running about 45 to 55 FPS. That is when we're fairly zoomed in and looking at the actual world itself. Zooming out the transition is very smooth and easily hits 100 frames per second plus on the big expansive overworld map. Anyway it's cool to see that modern paradox games working on Apple Silicon Mac hardware. Next up we're looking at League of Legends which I'm sure needs no introduction. So this this is an Intel game being translated through Metal 2 but you wouldn't be able to tell because this is running at extremely high frame rates even though we've got 1440p resolution set with a high graphics preset. If we push these settings down to very low then the frame rate goes up to over 300 fps which is probably too much you don't really need that many frames. So I also had a super chat request to test this on very low graphics preset in the Aram mode and here we're getting 200 or so fps in the game at 1440p which is absolutely plenty. So next we're testing the very highly requested game Euro Truck Simulator 2. So this actually has a Mac port but unfortunately it performs very poorly and that's because it's still stuck on the OpenGL graphics API which was deprecated by Apple so there are no real updates to the graphics for what is a span of many years at this point. But there is actually another way to run this game. You could run the Windows version through Crossover and make use of Game Porting Toolkit in order to translate the DirectX 11 graphics API into Metal which is compatible on this hardware. And here the frame rate is massively improved. So previously we we're running about 30 to 45 FPS on OpenGL and here we're getting about 150 FPS plus at 1440p at medium graphics setting. This is despite the fact that we're running through multiple translation layers including Windows to Mac, Intel to ARM64 and DirectX to Metal. So even though the macOS port of the game is very unoptimized we can switch to the Windows version instead and run it through crossover and get much better performance. And here the next game that we're looking at is Halo 4. So this is part of the Master Chief collection and it's actually a Windows only game and we're running it through crossover once again. So just so that you're aware we're not able to play the online multiplayer version we have to run the offline version instead and that's due to the entity implementation. However the single player campaigns all seem to work fine. You can also play non-competitively online as well and there are multiple games in this collection. Here I'm playing Halo Combat Evolved which is the first game in the series and this has been enhanced with improved graphics. So pretty quick frame rate 
right here running at 1440p at the enhanced high graphics preset, getting easily over 80 or so FPS. Next up is the game Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. So back when this first launched, this had pretty good online multiplayer support. Even though we're running the Windows game through crossover, you could easily play online with your friends. Unfortunately, an update introduced anti-cheat, which now prevents Wine users, including Steam Deck players, as well as Mac players from playing this through translation layer. However, the offline mode is still very playable. Here we're running at 1440p at the high graphics preset. You could probably turn the graphics settings down in order to get a better frame rate. It can be a little stuttery as well, which is kind of the reality of playing Windows games through a translation layer. A lot of the animations will cache after you run them once or twice, so it should end up being smoother the longer that you play. Anyway, pretty impressive performance for a very recent AAA title, running at 1440p at high graphics preset at about 35 to 40 FPS. Next is the expansive open world first person RPG, Kingdom Come Deliverance. So this is a very demanding Windows title. Again, being run through crossover preview, we're managing to play this at 1440p high. Here the gameplay is relatively smooth. We're running at about 60 to 70 FPS. And everything from dialogue and exploration and combat seems to work smoothly without too many hitches, partially thanks to the way that the crossover translation layer is making use of D3D Metal to translate this DirectX 11 game into Metal. So next up is a Windows title, Sonic X Shadows Generations. So when you're running this game, one of the things you're going to notice is that the cutscenes don't work correctly. This is often an issue with Wine implementation, often to do with the codecs and translating it from Windows to Mac OS. However, gameplay itself works pretty well. It can stutter. Once you've cached a specific shader or animation, then it should run a lot smoother after that. Here we're running at 1440 at the high graphics preset and it seems to run pretty well. Hopefully one day the cutscene issue is going to get fixed. So the last game that we're looking at is Cyberpunk 2077. So we're able to run this using the crossover translation layer. This is one of the most demanding games and it's actually going to be coming out onto macOS in the future. We're going to get a natively optimized port making use of advanced metal features as well as frame generation and also ray tracing and that's all coming out in early 2025. But for now here I'm running the game at 1080p at the high graphics preset set we're getting a very decent frame rate of about 60 fps and here i'm cranking up the settings even more so here we're running at 1440p at the high graphics preset hitting a really good solid 40 fps or so so the question you must be asking yourself at this point is is it worth upgrading the m4 pro chip to the 14 cpu core 20 gpu core version over the lower end 12 cpu 16 gpu core version so in this last section i'm just going to do a direct comparison between the two iterations of the m4 pro that you can buy. On the left you have the 12 CPU 16 GPU core version. This is running on a Mac Mini with active cooling. And on the right we have the M4 Pro 14 CPU 20 GPU core which we've been testing throughout this video so far. You can see a pretty big performance uplift from the higher end M4 Pro of roughly 10% increase in performance. So this is really quite interesting. Also ran a similar benchmark for 1080p high on the Mac OS game Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And here we have a less pronounced difference. We're only looking at about a 9% uplift for the higher end M4 Pro. And and here with the Total War Warhammer 3 Battle Benchmark, we're seeing a larger improvement of about 12%. So this just goes to show that there is a marked improvement between the two iterations of the M4 Pro chip. And whilst I would never recommend upgrading a Mac just for gaming, that $400 price difference might be justified considering that game performance does improve and you're also going to get a 1TB solid state drive and improved CPU core performance. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. I'm going to be covering the base M4 chip next in the MacBook Pro 4 14 inch so if you want to catch my live stream request any games or watch my final edited video then make sure to keep subscribed to this channel thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video